Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm good, good, good. All right, let's give it a minute. Get Dada mm -hmm. in the room. Oh, yeah, I think she's here. It's morning there, yeah. Look like afternoon. For me, it is nine a.m. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like a whole <laughs> a so whole wild. day. <laughs> yeah, that's like what twelve, twelve hours. No. Yeah. Yeah. Almost twelve hours. Wild. I could never do this in the morning. No way. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> Me in the mornings? Nah. Okay. Um, Dada, yeah. leave the room, and I'm going to invite you again. We're having some issues getting her on here. That's cool. All right, let's try one more. I'm noticing people outside joining. Hi guys. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Hi, uh, I've been struggling to join, but glad to be here. Took a minute, but you made it. Welcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so excited to do this today, y'all. Thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for having oh, yeah. us. I'm honored. Uh, um, Joel actually is the one who. I don't know, kind of like submitted my name to join. <laughs> so <laughs> I was so happy and excited and I'm just happy to be here. Oh, yes. Love that. I was only supposed to have done this, I think, a week ago. But okay. I'm glad I wasn't feeling well. So Yes. I guess, so, yeah, I just wanted it better. Exactly. It's delayed and now we made it work. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. So welcome, everyone. This is another Out the Frames with One Off. This is an ongoing feature that we do where we talk to Black NFT artists about their work, about blockchain, and their experiences. I am C. Sando, the digital director. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This is so great. So many people are jumping in. This is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a social light. <laughs> So it's you, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's both of y'all actually, but okay. <laughs> um, so to start off, instead of me doing the intros and doing your bios, I'm going to have each of you introduce yourselves. So Joel, why don't you start? Cool. Um, my name is Joel Meshak Omolo. Look at me exposing my government names. But yeah, um, I'm known as a thousand islands on, on the Twitter space. The name was really random, so don't even ask me the inspiration for that name. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I do digital art now, but I started as a fashion designer and um, creative director of my own fashion brand called Naiva. As well, plug myself. Uh, but yeah, so since uh, it's been about 10 months since I started selling NFTs, but it started off as just me designing my clothes and then doing digital artworks to like put out campaigns for that. So yeah, I'd say fashion designer, creative director, and now a digital artist. Yeah. From Kenya, Nairobi. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dada, you want to tell us who you are? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so I go by a lot of names, but... Dada, no, Dada and <laughs> Don Dada and his VR, which is her memoirs, is like my staple kind of like alter ego, if you may say so. So that's how I represent myself as an artist. And I've been a traditional artist for a couple of years now, maybe even more than five years, even more than six years. And I mostly did fine arts, which includes painting, pastels, um, canvas work, oil paints. I've basically explored it all, all the way into sculptures and um, 
collages and uh, that basically built a very huge foundation for me for when I started uh, within the NFT space uh, as a digital artist because then I went into photography and I also wanted to kind of like merge my collage work with the photography so that's kind of like how I came to my NFT genesis and that's all thanks to Diana when who was giving out um, invites to women of color and uh, the LGBT community she was really doing a lot to onboard us and uh, yeah and uh, fast forward now I've been into NFTs for just about a year and uh, uh, currently working for a couple of DAOs and with a couple of DAOs, including Afrofuture DAO being the main one where I'm the marketing lead. And uh, there is Cyberbot DAO. I'm part of the operations team and we're doing a lot. And I'm just going to say that yeah, everyone should keep their eye out on Cyberbot because I think even Joel is part of the artist club in Cyberbot. So yeah. right here is like a cyberbot yeah. representation group and yeah, yeah. uh we're currently having a fundraiser so yeah and many more to come that's basically about me and uh yeah always looking to develop uh web3 um environments and uh basically just help to see how i can bridge the gap uh, and the intersection between tech and art for the common person and the common artist who is struggling to make ends meet. And what kind of um, NFT art do you create? Joel, do you want to go first? Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool, yeah, cool. cool. Um, yeah, um, so mostly right now I'm doing uh, digital collages, like mixed media collages. So like you'll see from my work, most of the influences from what I do with clothes and you'll see me using wax print. I don't want to call it African print because it's a bit, it's a long story where that print comes from, but it's not really African. But yeah, so I use uh, what we call Kitenge here in Nairobi and uh, mix it with now the stories I'm trying to tell. So at first I was doing it purely for my brand, but at some time I was like, no, I go through way much more than just my clothing line. There's a lot I go through as a, as a young artist, you know, like, especially when you, you fully went to, I went to uni abroad. <laughs> came back and told my parents I'm trying to do art. It's like, yo, it doesn't make sense. So that going through that journey and having that experience that no one can really, you know, um, see, for me as an artist, that's how I express myself now through my work. So a lot of it with my personal feelings, sometimes even what you go through as a black artist in a space that's international. So trying to diffuse all that in my collages and still tell stories about Nairobi, all that. So it's, some of the work is also like from frustration. Actually, some of my best pieces are from frustration about different things. But it's not all like doom and gloom. Some of it is also like celebrating black culture. So it's a lot. I can't really put specific themes, but mostly highlighting uh, black people, my people, my culture uh, through the digital collage. And I'm trying to now kind of find a way to tell a different narrative other than the, us the usual like... Um, things we see for black art. And I think that's, that's something I, I've taken a leaf from Dad as well. Creating her own sets and bringing out things from the past, but in a futuristic way. Mad. So yeah, so I think I've taken a leaf from that, but now in my own like streetwear kind of rugged way. And I feel like I've been more, I don't know, I want to say comfortable in that streetwear space. Because at first I felt like streetwear had this connotation of being rough and being like, you know, kind of all over the place but ever since I joined this space there's that respect for you know just do your thing so yeah I think that um yeah that's me so far it's it's a lot but yeah, yeah put it together I'd say yeah these are collages yeah. well I, I really resonate with uh what Joel said uh I also uh I started off as a collage artist but currently I'm mostly delving into photography editorial photography and fashion photography and also just a lot of abstract work um so my foundation in school was uh based on fashion i was studying fashion i was supposed to finish fashion until <laughs> a lot of things came in my way but so i couldn't complete my course uh, and i fully became like i don't know 
like um I don't like a muse or like a creative person, like an artist. And uh, I was making ends meet just by doing uh, shoots and uh, photography and uh, even films and modeling and uh, creative directory. And that's how you basically like come down to what I'm creating now, the type of art I'm creating now whereby it's either I'm doing myself portraits or I'm collaborating with the people to do images, um, uh, high quality editorial images that we can edit into collages and we can always recreate and recreate and regenerate more art out of it. And uh, that's kind of like the NFT work that I create. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to see how much I can express uh, and how many different mediums I actually like to express myself through. So, yeah, that's just overall what I create. I love that both of you have had really interesting journeys. Like, you thought you were going in one direction, and then life just took itself, <laughs> and now you're here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah um, I always say, like, I don't know. I don't know if uh, I'm truly happy to be here, but I never thought I would be in, like, this kind of position where I'm actually selling my art and uh, I'm a full-time artist and I'm making a living out of my art like it's actually wild <laughs> if I may say so so yeah I'm happy to be here and see a lot more of the people I know in the real life community and like on board even my friends and uh, just do grow in this journey together yeah for sure for sure it's true it's like it's almost that feeling of you're not supposed to be here. And that's something I'd, I'd felt the whole time I was doing my brand stuff or even following Virgil. It's like, we're not, we're not meant to do that. Like artists have never been meant to be franchised like this or you're not meant to sell pieces for X amount. I'm not gonna expose how much we're making, but yeah, basically it's not, it's not meant to happen. Like we're kind of paving a whole new way in a way that people are looking and they're like, yo, this is possible. So yeah, yes, I share the same like sentiments. Um, you, Dada, touched on this a little bit, but I want to get into what brought you to NFTs, each of you. Um, so since you started, do you want to start with, you mentioned Diana Sinclair, who actually was the first person that we interviewed in this series, which is, it's dope, such a good <laughs> show. That's yeah, that's like my nft guardian together with jesse they really did a lot to put me into this space and highlight me and basically amplify me and just because of the belief that they had in my art even when i was basically like i don't know if i want to mint my art i don't know if i'm good enough i don't know if i'm gonna sell this piece so they really pushed me to mint this piece and uh we did, and it sold in like two days, and it was insane. That's how it all started. Um, Diana Sinclair is just, oh, wow, doing the damn thing out there. Like, um, I feel like half of the Black community is highly inspired by what they're doing, and if not inspired, was actually onboarded by them. So it's really an honor to know that I'm on the same platform that they were on uh, a while back and that's all. <laughs> uh, mine was a bit more random. Basically, I saw another artist post on Instagram, the Instagram story, and talk about how much they made after selling the first NFT. For me, that's all the motivation I needed, honestly. <laughs> so I think it was like, like $1,500 for one piece. <laughs> Like, nah, 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 I'm hoping on this. I learned about crypto, everything in a week. I was, I was in. Uh, and I think we all know the struggles for guys who are in the NFT space of getting a foundation invite. I remember I was posting on every post because guys just put, they put it out there like I have 10 foundation invites or three, put your work and if I like it, I'll give you one. So I remember I did the same thing. I posted on so many. And also, I mean, you, know, you never really think you're going to get it. So I kept on posting, posting. And then... There's one that was specifically for people of color. So I feel like, oh, my chances might be high here. And then they give it to someone else. Luckily, <laughs> she already had one. So they're like, uh, our second choice was Joel. Then they DM'd me and sent it to me. Yo, I lost it. I was like, yo, it's actually happening. That was like back in May. 
little did I know it's going to take another four to five months before I make my first sale. But yeah, <laughs> joining already was just like, yo, this is, this is dope. But that's just Those the beginning. Those are the things like, they don't tell you. <laughs> oh my days. That's just the beginning. Like getting the invite, you think yeah. it's a big break. But for me, I got, it was just like, okay, now you're entering a whole new space, the whole new set of like mental trips that no one can prepare you for. But yeah, you have to, you have to just jump in. So yeah, that was my yeah. story. Yeah. I was in it for the money. But yeah, but things changed. Yeah, right now, <laughs> oh right now, yeah, right now it's more like community and I'm actually making friends. <laughs> yeah. So it's different now. Now that is genuine. It's like I'm actually trying to put out there like different stories. Like I'm learning more as I'm in this space. And now if I make a sale, it's like a bonus because I started a full-time thing for me. But I can see it becoming like a full time, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love growth. <laughs> That's good, the honesty, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we got a question from somebody who's watching, and it's something that I actually wanted to talk to you about. So I'm going to ask it now. It says, "Much love to the one-off team. Thank you for inviting my two favorite artists into the space." Uh, the question I have for them is, what do they want to see change in the ne- in the space in the in the coming years? There is a second question, um, but we can do these in two parts. The second question is, what are the pros and cons of being an African artist in this space? So let's talk about the changes you'd like to see coming up. Who wants to take it? Wow. Uh, yeah, changes. I'd say. Um... Uh, that's a good one. I'd say inclusion because I feel like, yeah. especially more recently, you drop a whole new collection, you spent you know a lot of money trying to mint pieces and list them, and then you don't feel like your work is getting as much traction because there's so much. There's only so much you can do on Twitter, but if the platform you're posting on doesn't like put your work on, even if you, I'm not asking for like the whole day, even I don't know ten hours, six hours, like a bit more of a quick rotation on who's getting traction and who's getting on the home page like just a few more features for um let's say my, the minority i mean everyone really but just i feel like there should be a bit more of a rotation rather than just the same names on the home page the same same old same old so i feel like for someone who's coming into the space can be discouraging because you feel like i have to do another you know seven months before i get any recognition and that defeats the whole purpose of web3 it's supposed to be like you know decentralized inclusive so that's the main thing that even now seven to you know eight months in i'm still feeling and i'm you know and i've been doing this for time so i can only imagine someone who's been in the space for a month who's good as well like super super talented but their work will never be on the home page just because you know no one knows them or just because you don't have enough followers so that doesn't make sense to me so i think maybe more platforms i know it takes a lot to set a platform but maybe more platforms that you know for, for us for actual artists and not just clout so i think that's one of the main things i want to change yeah. Dada. Great. Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, great. Um, I'd really love to echo what Joel just said because uh, being in the NFT space could be like a short, rapid time, but the things that you kind of have to do to push your work to actually sell is it makes it such a stretched out period that we feel like we've been here for like 10 years and we talk about it and we're like damn we are literally so tired (laughs) we're literally so tired we're tired of the shilling and um we're tired of so many things and i'm trying to talk about stuff like racism and sexism and homophobia and all these things that you'd think we'd be able to escape by creating this digital utopia or this web three or this dimension but really everything just kind of translates from one space to the other because we're kind of all the same people participating in these things so i feel like it's really hard for black people to grow in these platforms because of even what we are witnessing as we speak like in this space, there's a lot of hatred, there's a lot of, uh, there is not a lot of inclusion. And uh, even though they say that there is, it's kind of like something that they just say to, I don't know, kind of like to to make people happy or to make it look like it's happening. Mm -hmm. But really it's just, it's all fake. 
So I think for me, it's as well inclusion. And uh, I don't know how we can handle the racism part and the homophobia part, because these are people, the people who are saying these are, are people we look up to, are people who we've supported their programs and they've built things out of Web3 and I don't know how to infiltrate that, but I hope that in the coming future that we'll be able to see a change in that side and uh, we'll kind of be able to see also um, equality in terms of uh, how many women are in this space. Cause I know the percentages are really crazy and that's something I wanted to bring up that if you're a woman and you're an artist and you're art out there and if even if you're part of the LGBT community you need to start putting your art out there and I'm not saying get it into NFTs but take your time do your research know if it's the right thing for you but you joining this space would really change the balance of this space like what actually would bring about balance in this space because right now I just feel there's a lot of things in the space that are off and that comes with every single new space, you know, comes with every single new space. You kind of have to grow into it. You kind of have to build into it. So I just hope to see more cohesiveness from everyone in general. Yeah, I think that's yeah. one of the, the big challenges, right, is not recreating all of the issues that we had in traditional art, right? Like the whole notion around the creation of NFTs and this blockchain space was about yeah. um, more equality, making sure that artists can make a living, you know, the things that Joel yeah. was talking about. Um, but now we're seeing <clears throat> that stuff, like the stuff we were trying to run away from is just following us. So it's like, how do yeah. we get out of that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a lot of what I think and a lot of what I hope to see a difference in and also make the difference myself, not just hope that it will come from yeah. someone else. We are actively doing things that uh, will lead to kind of like a better future for us. And that starts with me, starts with Joel, that starts with XX One Off, and it starts with Cyberbot yeah. and all these initiatives and all these DAOs that we're forming. Um, basically paving the path for everyone else who's coming after us and we hope to make it easier. I love that. Yeah, sure. Okay, so thank you to MDD Arts for this question. Here's the second part. What are the pros and cons of being an African artist in this space? Um, I think I'll go first. Um, pros. pros, I think we can be able to tell a unique story other than what's already out there because there's, there's a whole new perspective we've got even with the digital collages or with the 3d wall the 3d art coming from africans is mad mad <laughs> pressure 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 because i remember <laughs> even today i was looking at youtube tutorials and i was like oh my god it's gonna be another 15 years if i can do what like the guys like oh oh, oh are doing um this fail um Oh, the names are escaping me, but yeah, yeah there's so Kicks. many like 3D artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Kicks, yeah, for sure. There's so many 3D Kicks artists. I see, I see the process, the process that they go through, and I'm like, I, I so I don't even post any process videos because like, if you see, <laughs> if you compare, if you compare what I go through compared to like they actually have a plan. My, I just stumble upon uh, like across things, but yeah, there's so much. There's an, a different perspective that we can tell as African artists that you just can't replicate, you know, if you've not been in Africa, if you've not been born in the culture. So that uniqueness, the, the con is the same thing, is that, yeah, we're really good. And, you know, there's, there's so much talent, but it's almost like uh, there's only like the upper echelon that get that highlight and get the recognition. Uh, and that's because they've really been successful. So guys who like are just starting off, it's so much harder for them to get up there because we're not that many in this space in terms of like influential collectors or like influencers. So unless someone um, kind of co-signs you, like how we have uh, Jesse co-signing um, Dada or like even Diana did for me as well, reposting my work, unless you get that opportunity, you can be good, but you'll never get that, you know, being uplifted by, you know, other uh, artists who are in this space. So that's the, the con. There's so much, you have to work like twice as hard to get the same recognition yeah. as someone who's drawing like 
stick yeah. figures and selling for two ETH. It's mad. <laughs> like <laughs> we've seen it happen for months. Yeah, <laughs> we talk three, about three it three a lot. <laughs> So there's some things we know it's beyond us it's beyond us because we'll never have I mean we will eventually but right now we don't have that influence to like for me to repost someone's work and all of a sudden people are collecting but that's the goal for you know for us guys to be now the influence not influencers but you know to be influential I'd say yeah so that that's I'd say that's a con yeah okay yeah um I agree with Joel and I think even so another pro so a pro is that we really have a lot of uniqueness and culture. And I also feel like we're relatively still very few in this space, just as he said. And I think that's kind of like a pro. And just as he said, again, the same thing mm. that's a con. When we come even into looking at, uh, what can I say, the adoptability of crypto and NFTs within Africa, I feel like it's one of the major things that's stopping African artists into growing because uh, when you consider things and projects like Boss Beauties and um, they have partnerships with the UN, with the Rolling Stone, um, if I think about like me as an African artist, if we're considered, I don't know, one of the best or a few of the best African artists, you'd think and expect of me to be partnering up with a lot of the major African crypto brands or fashion brands or <coughs> any brands, because we can see a lot of that from uh, the brands uh, in the US and the UK. Yeah. We can see Vogue. We can see all these uh, high yeah. fashion brands. And uh, we just simply don't have that in Africa yet. We just don't have that level of... Uh, adaptability yet and I feel like it really affects uh, how we sell as an artist because once more people from our area are able to understand uh, what we're doing and the mission of what we're working towards I feel like we'll be able to get more support and more push to the point where we don't have to es expect like I don't know a retweet from someone else yeah. who's bigger away from outside from of, from Africa, Africa yeah. and stuff like that yeah. so I feel like crypto adoptability and also the legislation around crypto like mm. think of nigeria twitter was banned for twitter a long banned, time yeah. twitter is what most nft artists used to push their work so i feel like there's a lot of things that are affecting us there's a lot of cons but the best thing about us is that we really do overcome everything and yeah, when yeah, i yeah. even do look at our art and even the exhibitions lined up that I'm participating in or even the ones I'm not participating in, like our effort and our talent is undoubtable. Like it's there and there's yeah. nothing you can do about it. <laughs> there's yeah. not much you can say. It's kind of more like a force. It's like a power and it exists and there's nothing anyone can do about it so i feel like that's the biggest pro and for me that one pro overcomes every <laughs> other single thing that we're going through because it does work out sometime not most times but i feel like that's the nature of life itself sometimes it does work out sometimes it doesn't work out so yeah yeah i love that i love those answers um, I want to get into talking specifically about each of your work. Um, so let's talk about your your latest collections. Um, Joel, you recently released a collection. Tell us about it. Oh, yeah. Um, I just dropped Grio. I think it's been a week, just less than a week. And uh, I've done those pieces over time. I, I'm sure I'd sent, I'd sent quite a bit to Dada as well. She's probably seen them on Instagram as well. And the thing about uh, this space is like you can wake up today, minting and listing is three dollars. The next week it's fifty, sixty, seventy per piece. So that's exactly what happened. So <laughs> I planned to drop these a long time ago, but the minting and listing fees just skyrocketed. So I was like, "Yo, let me just wait." And then um, more recently, uh, I dropped like a, a few pieces on. I mean, I dropped a piece on OpenSea. And guess who's the first collector? <laughs> Uh, Dada, Dada bought my piece, and oh, that literally I, went straight. <laughs> yeah, it went, it went straight into the I, I love his art, and I keep on, I keep on telling him, I'm gonna yeah. collect a piece. I'm gonna collect a piece, and I was like, "That's cup. You did not say that. You, you surprised me. It came out of nowhere." 
<laughs> like I just I remember I remember just checking I uh, I saw the email but I didn't open it. Then I saw her reposting the work and I was like, "Oh no. Don't tell me it's her." So yeah, she did but she did buy the piece and uh that literally went straight into minting and listing. And then a day later, Phil also bought another piece that went to listing more uh pieces in the collection. So yeah, I was able to do I initially I wanted to do three pieces but eventually did uh six. I can you can hear me, yeah? I can hear you, but I think we just lost uh data. Oh cool, cool. So we could wait for her. Let me see if I can get her back in. You can keep talking though. Oh cool, cool. Uh, but yeah, so initially it was only meant to be like a three-piece collection. But yeah, um, obviously all that happening at the same time, I was like, I may as well bump it up to six pieces. But yeah, the ethos around Griot, which is the name of the collection, Griot Untold Stories, was for me to give a bit more perspective on the inspiration of like the pieces I do. So I, I tied them to actual stories, not actual people, so they're not specific real people, but they're real stories that I've either heard or seen online uh, whether it's you know talking about uh like the one i talked about a fashion designer and people questioning whether his career is really you know is 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 his fashion really big enough for you to just do fashion so in- interestingly enough that was my story that was actually an actual real story so one of the pieces is about me another one about um uh, basically people choosing a conventional careers like trying to do uh flight school and most people are thinking we should probably do engineering or law so it me trying to tell a different perspective of things go through people go through and you don't really hear about and uh yeah i feel like having that, having that connection oh yeah and one of them was also about uh like someone who was wrongfully detained i've literally had a story like that before in real life where someone in case of mistaken identity or something and i can only imagine what you know these loved ones are going through at the time so talking about that and tying it to the piece it brings a bit more perspective and bring that story like close to home so being that i think that vulnerability was the, was a new thing about this collection i felt like i put myself out there a bit more than i normally comfortable with but yeah finding a collector who you know related with the pieces was amazing i remember it actually happened during our pre interview literally literally the email came oh. while we were talking and I was like yo uh, yeah so one piece has gone so far but yeah i think that's what this space has been about for me but you staying authentic and really hoping someone aligns with it i can't really tailor my work to be something that's for sale you know what i mean so yeah. that's one of the mental trips i can say i went through where you the fact that you're seeing other people succeeding makes you want to change your style makes you feel like oh maybe i'm doing something that's not you know palatable or maybe i should change to something that's a bit more marketable i didn't do that so there's a matter of maybe taking a few steps back i think i took like 2 3 months off because it kind of messes up with your mind you're not making sales mm-hmm. but when you tie you when you stop tying your work to making money and just start producing work for the actual just you know the love of the art then it completely switches so mentally you even start producing more you're more creative So that's exactly what happened. So when I came back this time to drop the collection, it was more about me sharing those stories. If it sells well and good, if it doesn't, I put it out there. And yeah, so so far one piece has gone. I've still got five pieces left. But yeah, I think the reaction I got from the tweets, people reposting, resharing, that meant a lot. I remember I remember yeah, I was really happy about that. Because what especially considering what it took for me to actually put out the pieces uh it's crazy but yeah a, a big part of that story is you need people around you like for me dada was there mm-hmm. uh, another friend called Phil who bought art, other artists buying your work is it's a top tier feeling like you can't you can't really match that with obviously i'm still happy when collectors buy but another artist it, it just means so much more because them setting aside 300 200 it means much more because i know what that means But yeah so having community that's where for me things changed I was like yo this thing isn't about you making money or opportunities it's about getting to generally you know friends you know make new friends and build a community so yeah i think that's as far as my new collection that's one thing that really it's going to stick with me like for a long time that uh, aspect of community and genuine friendships 
which is funny because I still I've still not met <laughs> still not met Dada in, in person. It's crazy. So this but, whole yeah. time he's been gone. Joel has pretty much been talking about FYA. Well, oh, <laughs> you left. And that's been- gas. <laughs> <laughs> Gas, 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 gas. But it's true, though. Yeah, yeah, partly, partly. But yeah, I was just explaining how it, it's it, like the community aspects came, like came close to home in my last collection because had it not been like for you and Phil, that would probably be like a two piece or three piece collection. But the fans came in, went straight into like minting, and that's a real, real community. Because it's not like you guys told me. Even Phil did the same thing. Just woke up. No, actually, it happened in the evening. Randomly, just the email comes in. Then I see him tweeting about it and I'm like, yo, don't do that, bruv. Like, you get, you get emotional. I was like, nah, nah, nah. And then I get, I get you back. Trust me. No, but no, no, I'll never forget that. Trust me. It's mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. For me, it was really like an honor. Like, I've been planning on collecting a lot of people's art and immediately I got the chance to do so. It was the only thing on my mind. And I was like, okay. I need Joel's piece. I need MDD. <laughs> and I was like, I need Joel's piece and I need MDD. And I was like, I need them now. <laughs> so I, I just went so ahead and I bought those pieces. And uh, I continued buying pieces from a couple more Kenyan artists. So it's always a good feeling to know that, uh, um, you know, if I can win and maybe get someone else to feel um, the same way or even just almost uh, a little bit the same way um it makes me happy because like that's really the whole essence yeah i once i get more money i'm definitely going to buy like a one-on-one piece from <laughs> Joel. <laughs> yeah i'm still waiting for the Trust money me. I still I, 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 that. I, unfortunately i can't afford it <laughs> <laughs> i refuse um, yeah, i refuse but, i remember you told me no, 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 don't do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> but I remember I was so happy. I was so happy because you, like, your collection dropping around that time. I remember, I don't think I was ever going to drop anything. Then your collection did so well. I remember I was happy. Like, I was, when the emails, were, no, look, like, when the tweets were coming and I was, I was literally following you on foundation, I probably saw those auctions even before you. So I'll send them to you like, yo, 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 yo. Someone what you always someone do. Someone do. Like, you know oh the funny goodness. thing about Joel? He sees... Yeah, I was, the auctions even before <laughs> i do before. so i'm like randomly chilling and he's like calling me or he texts me he's like yo have you seen you're on the, you're on the foundation homepage and i'm like what mad, let mad. me check let me check <laughs> so we're know, really just big day, yeah. fans of each other's work and uh, man it's really an honor like big mad love oh. <laughs> mad love <laughs> Oh, what? I, love, I love that about this space and like both of you talking about the idea of artists collecting other artists work and how meaningful that is to you that's that's so amazing I totally understand that yeah yeah and I think really that's the uh-huh. future of uh, building more black communities in the space which is kind of like unfortunate but when you think about it still very very powerful which puts the power within our hands and i really yeah. like the whole idea and the concept of putting power back into black artists and black collectors and just the black community in general because we deserve so much more and uh, if only we could get even half of what we have in store like it would be insane you know so imagine a world where we can get fully and unrestricted black creativity and black thoughts and ideas and it's just theirs fully theirs created by them for them and that's really the future and i think that's why i kind of like being in the DAOs i work for because that's kind of like what we focus on mostly like uh highlighting black artists and giving them a platform to work and funding them and then further amplifying them into building like their own careers and uh, helping like build that chain of sustainability within our community rather so yeah it's really a huge part of uh, my belief and i'd love i really love to build it by actions and that includes buying hella pieces when i can <laughs> real energy 
You also recently launched a collection on Foundation. Um, yeah. And it's sold out now, right? One more. Yeah, I actually launched two, and uh, yeah, they actually sold out, and uh, it's been a wild, I don't know, week, because it all happened within a day, and there were like six pieces, and I didn't even think they would sell out that fast. It was a collaboration between me and my very good friend and uh, uh, creative partner. He's called Shitanda, and... Uh, this was basically like the launch of our collective, which is going to be doing quarterly drops uh, in addition to like onboarding uh, creative local talent within Kenya, which will further expand into Eastern Africa. So it was a huge success for us because it was more of like us putting out work that we created for fun and for, I don't know, for our happiness and it just, did so well and it was so unexpected because that collection and those two collections actually single-handedly raised my floor and we were having like each piece going mm -hmm. for one eat one eat one eat one eat one eat and i'm like this is too much <laughs> it was actually too much Wait, potent, potent yeah, so it was really exciting and i'm really going to keep the momentum up because i know one of my issues as an artist is just uh being consistent with uh, my art and being consistent with believing in myself and putting my work out there. But yeah, I feel like this is an issue a lot of artists have. So I'm just, I'm like, we're together as long as you're working on changing um, the way you think about yourself and the way you, uh, the way you view your art, I feel like the results could really, I don't know, could impress you and also could blow away your mind because yeah, just give yourself that chance. <laughs> really just give yourself that chance. And I feel like even when it comes to NFTs and people are so unsure about so many things, give yourself that chance and just see what it's all about. See if it's worth it for you. See if it's working for you and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So when it comes to like the collection, one, I feel like both were abstract and uh, one was mostly like me and uh, my cats. <laughs> in my bedroom and it's really crazy because i don't know why that concept really killed but i have like i know it's because of the animals people really love animals and uh, i don't know guys went really well for the black cats so it was just something fun we shot out of my phone and that's what we usually do we come together and uh, i'm like i want you to take pictures of me with my cats and i want you to take it like in this corner and we collaborate with the photographer and uh, we shoot it and then we think about the ways that we can edit the work and we finally do and yeah, it's kind of like a story that comes together so randomly yet so cohesively. Like there's no formula as to how mm. I really create my work. Um, I couldn't say that my work takes like four hours cause like particularly the abstract collection I think I was telling Joel that he'd be mad yeah. if I tell him how long it took to create it because I was like, <laughs> I was taking like, I think a maximum of 10 minutes on Photoshop and each, each picture just, uh, I put so many pictures together and I'm working with the different light settings on Photoshop and I'm like, okay, I like this. I like <laughs> <What>? this one. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. <laughs> So even just the minting those was something so refreshing to me because I have this mentality where I like to overdo things. If you do look at my other collage pieces, I do get to get, it gets a lot. So I'm trying to see if I can get away from symmetry and just try to do things more randomly and uh, naturally and organically and just, um, you know, add space into life. Uh, not all the time you're full of, stuff and like you're occupied and stuff like that and very busy 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 so yeah that's uh mostly like what i'm working on and uh, i think even with the collections i'm about to draw because i am dropping a whole lot of collections and even a project uh, um yeah <laughs> late march so <laughs> i'm really just getting started <laughs> that's all i can say i'm just getting started and it 
just keeps on getting better and better. That's what I actually tell Joel all the time. Like, wow. Um, my vision right now is in like five, ten years ahead of us. And mm. right now we are doing the damn thing. That's all I can say. Like, that's all I can say. <laughs> Not even a name. You can give us the name of the project now. Nothing. <laughs> Um, okay, maybe I can give you the name of the project. Um, so I have, I actually have two collections uh, dropping in the next two weeks. One of them is called Hunter X. And uh, it's a collaboration between me and uh, my good photographer friend called Kamau, who is featured in The Obscure Dao. And he's just also a prominent NFT photographer in the space. So I really love his work. And uh, simply this collaboration will blow your minds away because it's out of uh, his comfort zone and i really did push him out of his comfort zone because he's like um very light love yeah, and yeah, what yeah, we shot yeah. was very rage anger whips yeah. darkness so yeah um, it's really gonna blow your mind away and uh, the other project is called um, See No Evil, and that's just a personal project um, closely related to the Omni project that I released uh, uh, a week, a few weeks ago. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. As for the project um, yeah. around March, um, you can keep your eyes on my social media. I'm going to dox my mission and my roadmap and everything that we're doing, even the team, soon enough because uh, we're still trying to polish up everything that we want to to do with this uh, project because it will be a very long-term project. It's not like something I'm going to drop once and uh, just leave the space. I'm planning on building a brand on this name, a brand on this project, and I'm planning on helping a lot of people with this project. So, yeah, check my bio and, you know, you'll probably see something special. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Excuse me. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so other than checking your bio, um, what's the best way for us to keep in touch with you, find out more about all of the DAOs that you're involved with and everything else you're doing? I'd definitely say Twitter because I'm so active there and uh, you want to see the NFTs that I'm dropping, I'll definitely post them on my Twitter. And um, yeah, that, all my links and all my press release uh, links and all my projects and anything that I'm working on is... Uh, I don't want to say the link in my bio because I already said that. <laughs> but it is in the link in my bio, <laughs> which is both on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, yeah, there's a whole lot you can learn. There's even opportunities. And uh, yeah, very much, very, I don't know, you can do anything within this Web3 space. So don't close yourself to just being an NFT artist. The opportunities are yeah. in abundance. Like, People are doing jobs that you really can't name. By people, I mean me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Things that didn't exist months ago, right? Exactly. Even weeks ago, like people are making up jobs and people are making six, even up to six figures per transaction. Like it's it's crazy. You can really be who you want to be if you do things right. But then there is no formula. So what is right? <laughs> And Joel, yeah. where can we keep up with you? Uh, for, for NFTs, uh, Twitter, definitely. Uh, Instagram, I probably just use it just to post my work. Uh, I like how Dada put a subtle flex, like press releases. I ain't got no press releases yet, but <laughs> <laughs> when they do come, <laughs> when they do come, I'll probably on Twitter. Yes, you do have yeah. some press releases. When we were oh, on yeah. Cyberbot, we did have. Facts, Don't. facts, facts. Yeah, and for my brand, for my brand, uh, Instagram. It's like I'm, I'm popping, but on Twitter, I started from scratch from like 50 followers. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, for, for NFTs, definitely uh, Twitter and yeah, yeah, Thousand Islands. I'm still trying to come up with the story as to why a Thousand Islands, but I now just, just wait on it. Yeah, yeah. I think Joel, you need to hire Dada as your publicist because honestly, <laughs> brand manager, it's embarrassing. The whole brand. Owner. I agree. <laughs> Yo, your name. 
Uh, your name? Where did your name come from? Thank you. I thought so. Don Dada. My name? Don Dada. Actually, uh, yeah. Exactly. The exactly. name on my yeah, bio yeah. came from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, well, then, run it, um, run it, run it, run the check. Run this, it. Is, <laughs> this is community right here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been super fun. I really appreciate y'all. Um, just to let everyone know who's here, if you are interested in being a part of this, please DM us. Or if you have anyone in mind that you'd love for us to talk to then you can DM us as well. Thank you so much. This has been so dope. Yeah. Love Thank it. you for Thank having you us. As well. And um, yeah. when your collections are dropping, yeah. please do send me the link so I can post it on our page. Perfect. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> so excited. Sweet. All right. Bye. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye.